Hi there, this is Sarah Kuhn. If you are an INFJ or in a relationship with an INFJ or related to an INFJ in any way and you want to figure out how they operate, what makes them tick, and how to communicate with them better, this is the show for you. It's called The Quiet Ones. This is a show that deconstructs INFJs, what they are, how they think, how they feel, how they operate, and how they relate to people with other personality types. Whether you have just found out that you're an INFJ or have known for a number of years, there is something for everyone. You will learn more about your personality type so that you understand who you are and understand how you operate in the workplace, in relationships, in your family, and with friends. I want you to walk away from every episode feeling like you have a place of belonging, feeling like you are no longer alone, feeling like you have a place to be heard and seen and understood as you really are. This is a place to connect with other INFJs, to learn and grow and really thrive. I want to give you inspiration and real life strategies that are going to help you figure out how to live your best life every single day. Though INFJs are very rare, you are not alone in this world. You are not the only one who thinks the way that you do and feels the way that you do. Hear from real INFJs just like Thank you. Hi there, Sarah Kuhn here. Welcome to another episode of The Quiet Ones. I am so excited to tell you that I finished writing my book this week. It is such a big accomplishment for me and I'm really excited. I'm also really, really excited for you to read it. There's so much good information in there. And I know that it will help you an awful lot, as much as all of this information has helped me. Now, there's still an awful lot of work to go into the book. Um, It's in the hands of my wonderful and amazing editor right now, and she's working her magic. So we're still on track for it to be released early next year. Um, It looks like it will be somewhere around April. I know that sounds like a long ways away, but I'm sure it will be here before we know it. If you haven't ordered it yet, please do so now. You can find the link in the show notes and also on the front page of my website. I've extended the sale price until the end of the year. Plus, when you pre-order my book, you get some amazing bonuses as well. I'm doing a free masterclass on how to find your purpose. You also get access to a private Facebook group. And I am working on a free mini book. And there's much, much more to come as well. So again, you can find the link on my website, infjwoman.com, and it's also in the show notes. Also, if you haven't signed up for my free New Year's resolution challenge, make sure that you do. It's a free email challenge for January. So I'm going to send you an email every day in January to help you stick to your resolution and to transform your goal into a lasting habit. It's completely free, so make sure that you check it out. You can find the link in the show notes and also on my website at infjwoman.com. I'm so glad that you've joined me for this episode today. I hope that you're having a really good day and that you are enjoying the holiday season. I am at a really hectic place in my life right now. I'm in the middle of moving to a different apartment in a situation that has turned from unpleasant to pretty much a crisis. But it's almost over, and I'm so thankful for that. The holidays are also a difficult time for me because there's so much going on, and there's so much more expected out of us. Plus, there are a lot more people around everywhere. Traffic is bad. The stores are horrifying. It's completely exhausting. I had to go to Lowe's this morning to get something for moving, and it was terrible. There were so many people in there, and... When it came time to check out, I was standing in line and there was um, a cash register to my right that was going to be open before the one that I was in line for. And there was nobody in line over there, but there was an older guy behind me who pushed me out of the way so he could get to the cash register before me. (laughs) I was just standing there shocked at how rude he was. I'm planning on doing the rest of my shopping on Amazon just to avoid any more experiences like that. It's also a hectic time of year for me, though, because it's my birthday. This Friday, uh, December 20th, is my birthday. And the older I get, the more I dread having birthdays. Don't get me wrong, I'm very thankful to be getting older because the alternative is pretty scary. 
It's just that I thought that I would have accomplished so much more in my life by the time that I was the age that I am now. I thought that I would have things that I don't have yet, and it's sad and painful and scary. And my birthday is just another reminder for me that I'm turning a year older and I still don't have those things that I really want. I always thought that it was just a given that you would grow up and get married and have kids. But here I am, all grown up and not married, and I have no kids. But I'm still holding out hope, though. I'm holding on to it by my fingernails, but I still have hope. This time of year always turns into a time of self-reflection for me. And I ask myself certain questions, like, what did I accomplish this year? What did I not accomplish? And what do I still want to do? That's why I have created the email challenge that I was talking to you about earlier. It's so important to spend a little bit of time reflecting on the last year and to make the choice to take those steps to do those things that you really want to do. Because if you keep waiting and keep waiting and keep waiting, you'll be waiting for the rest of your life. Last week, I wrote a blog post about the INFJ mean streak. I've been going through a situation that is all too familiar for me. I had a pleasant relationship with someone who I did business with. I went out of my way to be nice and polite to them, but then they took that as me being weak and tried to manipulate me when they didn't get their way. So I pushed back hard. And they got really upset. They even went so far as to call me hostile. I thought it was kind of funny, but it really got me thinking. Why does this happen to me? Because it happens a lot. And not just with people that I work with, but with friends and acquaintances as well. I poured all of it out to one of my friends, and her response was spot on. I felt more understood than I have in a really long time. She also called me out a bit, but that's what good friends are for, really. So here's the answer to the problem. Are you ready? I really want to share it with you because it's a whole thing, but I have to warn you, it might hurt a little bit. As INFJs, we are great at reading people. We can tell very soon after meeting them exactly what they want and how best to interact with them. We go so far as to tailor our personalities to theirs. So they see us as a certain type of person. We give them what they want. We are also people pleasers who put a great deal of thought into making people happy and keeping the peace around us. Sometimes we go to extremes with this, though. Because of these two things, we put up with a lot from people. We deal with people we can't stand in a very pleasant way. Oftentimes, they have no idea that we can't stand them. Even when we have issues with people that we do like, we tend to let things go rather than to bring them out in the open. I know I would much rather deal with being upset myself rather than talk to my friends about how they upset me and why. Yes, I know this isn't healthy, but knowing it's a problem and changing it are two very different things. So when people do things that upset me, I don't say anything about it. I just deal with it. A lot of times I blame myself for the issues and figure that they're probably my fault anyway. Yep. That's another thing I know that isn't healthy, but again, knowing it's a problem and being able to change it are two very, very different things. So what happens is that all of those little things build up and keep building up until I can't take it anymore. And then there's an explosion. That, combined with this special personality that I have made just for them, it's not me, but it's who they think is me. So when the real me comes out and I explode at them, they get really confused. They have no idea what's going on or who I am because all of a sudden I'm not acting like the person they know. One thing that my friend pointed out to me is that I am unintentionally manipulating them from the start by creating this exclusive personality just for them and giving them exactly what I think they want. I'm manipulating them. Now I want to be clear that everyone does this to some extent not just INFJs. Every personality type puts their best foot forward when they meet someone new or start a new job or are trying to make new friends. The difference is that we, as INFJs, take it to an extreme. If my coworkers 
and my friends and my family got together and compared my personality, they would come up with three different people. In fact, if three of my coworkers got together, I bet they would also come up with three different people. I'm different with almost everyone I know. This turns into a real problem at times because the real me is a whole lot different than who I try to be to make these people happy. Here's typically what happens. I go to an interview and project my best self. I land the job and start work, anxious for people to like me and to do a good job. My friend told me that I present a very subdued and weak presence, which is why I end up with so many narcissistic bosses who try to push me around. By being so agreeable and ready to help, I look like a pushover that can be bossed around in any respect. But then they try to push me around, and sometimes it's subtly, and it takes a while for me to resist it. Sometimes it's much more blatant, and I lash out pretty quickly. And I'm called disrespectful in the first week of work. It always happens. And then they see the real me, and they get confused. And they start telling me how wrong I am and how terrible I am, and some of them even tell me my personality is inherently messed up and I need to change it. As an extremely sensitive INFJ, I am completely offended. I'm offended that they don't see the effort that I have put into being nice to them for so long and giving them everything that I thought that they wanted. I'm offended that they don't recognize everything that I have put up with so quietly and so obediently. But I'm most offended that they think my personality is broken. I take that straight to heart and it hurts. It must be true because they said it, right? And the more that this happens, the more that I feel like it's true because so many people have said it over and over and over again. Now I have to stop here for a minute and really let that sink in. I can't tell you what an awakening this has been for me. I knew there was a problem, but I'm so accustomed to blaming myself that I didn't stop and look at the whole picture. And the thing is, I am to blame. But it's not because my personality is broken. It's because I haven't been real and honest from the start. So how do we fix this problem? How do we make it stop? That's what we really want to know, right? There are a couple of things that we need to do to change this. The first thing is to be real from the start of every relationship. You have to show people who you are from the beginning. I know this is not easy. Believe me, I know. Just the thought of it makes me nervous. As INFJs, we rarely show our real and true personality to anyone for any reason, even our closest friends. It's like a secret that we only share with those we value the most. We have been trained by so many bad experiences that people just don't value us and we need to hide. But the truth is that the wrong people don't value you at all. When we put up a front, we attract the wrong people. When we show them the real us, the wrong people will leave. But that's okay because they're not our people. When we show our true personality sooner, we will attract the right people from the start. They'll love us for who we are right from the beginning And there will never be a day that they tell us that our personality is broken or that we need to change. They will accept us for who we are and expect nothing more or less from us. The next thing that we need to do is speak up when there's a problem. When you are hurt or offended, you can't just assume that the other person knows that you are hurt. You have to tell them that you are hurt. You have to make them aware that you aren't okay with what happened. Think about it from their perspective for a minute. If you said something that unintentionally hurt or offended your friend or your significant other, would you want them to know? Would you want them to say, hey, that really hurt my feelings. I don't like it when you say those things or do that thing. Wouldn't you want to know? I know I would want to know. I've had friends that I've lost touch with and have wondered if there was something that I did that hurt them that I didn't know about. But if they never say anything, it's hard to know. And it can be something that you have no idea would hurt them. It can be something from their past that triggers some terrible memories or associated feelings. I know speaking up about these things isn't easy, but it is worth it. It will show you whether they are real friends as well. If they genuinely don't care that they hurt you, then it's best to know and walk away from them. 
but your real friends will care and will want to make it right. The most important thing that you can do to help this situation is to learn to love yourself and accept yourself. This is so important and so difficult to do. As empaths, we take on the feelings and emotions of others. When we have been in situations where we are not valued or appreciated, we take on those feelings too. And if we're not careful, we take them straight to heart and they become our truth. They turn into the beliefs that we hold about ourselves, that inner voice that's telling us that we're not good enough, that we don't belong anywhere, and that we're not lovable just the way we are. Then we start looking for things to change and start making those changes. But we don't know what the problem is, so we will never find the solution. Because ultimately, there is nothing that we can do to make those people happy with us. There is nothing that we can do to make them love us. Nothing. So no matter what changes we make, nothing will work. When our only source of love comes from the outside, we will be chasing self-love forever. The key is to bring self-love inside. The key is to find a way to love yourself. And it starts with acceptance. Instead of saying, I'm going to be happy when I lose 20 pounds, or I'm going to be happy when I get a new job, or I'm going to be happy when I find a new boyfriend or girlfriend. Instead of saying those things, we need to say to ourselves, I'm happy now. I accept myself now, the way that I am in the place that I am now. I know there are things that need to be improved and I'm working on that, but I'm okay with how things are now. It's also important for us to separate ourselves from people who make it feel like it's hard to love us. They do more damage than good. You are not hard to love just because you are different than they are. You are not hard to love just because you are different than they thought you were. You're not hard to love just because that is their opinion of you. You were made the way that you are for a reason. There is nothing broken or messed up about you. You're perfect just the way that you are. You are worthy of love right now, right here in this moment, just the way that you are. I really hope that this message touches you as much as it's touched me. This right here is my number one goal for the new year. It's the one thing that I'm going to be working on every single day, that I'm going to be thinking about and searching for and putting to work in my life because it's something that's been missing for a long time. And it's no longer okay with me that it's missing. I know that I need to fix it as soon as possible. And it's definitely my number one priority for 2020. Okay, so I have a couple of stories from our listeners that I wanted to share with you. The first one is from Sonia in Finland. And she says, Hi, I never usually message anyone on Instagram, but this time I had to. I'm an INFJ woman from Finland, and I've been listening to your podcast for some time now. It is really relatable. It feels almost crazy. I can really relate to the problems of telling anyone about your strong intuition. I have always felt really stupid when trying to describe my intuition to someone, and I fear that people think I am someone who thinks she is supernatural. But it's not like that at all. I just can see through people's bull. Many times I have figured out someone's bad character before they have done anything, but it's really hard to tell your friends about it, especially if they like that person or if you have nothing real to hold against them. It's nice to know that someone else struggles with similar things as well. I always feel like many social gatherings and especially parties where I don't know many people are pure torture and I always avoid them. But I guess most introverts do, not only SINFJs. The next one is from Allie in Mexico, and she says, Hi Sarah, I love your podcast. I'm an INFJ, and since I was really young, I always felt like I was different and didn't quite fit in, even if I was a part of a friend group. Learning about being an INFJ and knowing that there are other people who feel like I do has been incredibly beneficial. We had to take the personality test in middle school and high school, but I didn't start paying attention to what INFJ actually meant until recently. Using tools like your podcast to educate and understand myself has really changed my life for the better. Thank you for all that you do. 
I and so many others greatly appreciate it. All the best, Allie. And the last one that I have is from Aubrey. And she says, I can't quite type everything because I feel I'll send a novel. But I've just started listening to your podcast and I'm shook over how similar our experiences are. I desperately wanted to type as an INTJ because, same word, my whole life I wanted to be portrayed as stoic. But as I delved into INFJ, I knew this was me because it exposed what I thought were well-hidden secrets. I was terrified because I knew this was my true type, but it was everything I was trying not to be. When I embraced it, the experience was so cathartic to finally know that all my feelings were okay, that I wasn't just different. I look forward to hearing more. I look forward to hearing more. I just wanted to share our super similar stories. Thank you so much, all three of you, for sharing your stories. It's always so amazing to me to hear how much my blog and my podcast helps. It helps me so much to write it, and it helps me every time somebody sends a story that tells me about how similar their experience is and how much it's helped them. So if this is your experience, please send me your story. I would love to hear it, and I would love to read it so that everyone else can hear it too. It's such a big thing to know that we're not alone and that there are other people out there that are just like us, which is the whole point of this podcast and my blog. So if you have a story to share, please send it to me. You can send it to me at podcast at infjwoman.com or you can send it to me um, on Facebook or Instagram, which is at infjwoman. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast. It really means the world to me. Please make sure that you subscribe wherever you listen and that you tell your friends. And we'll see you again next week.